Okay, what is up traders? What is up tycoons? Super excited for today's video. Going to give you guys an update on TLT before the market opens, uh, just so that you guys are prepared for this week. Now, I do think that is a very good time to start being a little bit cautious in the market. All right, I expect to see some low volume activity uh, in the S&P 500 and in the market as a general uh, as we approach Christmas and as we approach the New Year's. Uh, it would make a lot of sense for me to you know, see some of that. Now, there's a lot of theories out there that we're seeing a large sell off due to tax loss harvesting. Uh, that's a strong possibility. So always keep that in mind. Uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new, and we'll go ahead and break it down. Okay, now things are looking pretty bearish. Uh, especially on the S&P 500, but we'll go ahead and look at TLT real quick um, and you know, really take a look at the bond market. The reason we're looking at the bonds is that everything Jerome Powell is doing directly correlates and affects the bond market. The bond market is much more massive than the stock market and him uh, uh, you know, raising and lowering interest rates is really going to affect the bond market directly versus the stock market. Okay, so a lot of times, Trading the bonds have been a, a better trade, in my opinion. And so that's why we're breaking this down. Now, look how perfectly it rejected our 61.8 retracement level right here at 109.72. OK, I've been mentioning this level and I and, you know, we have our wave four up here, which is this D wave. That's a corrective wave. So it should be an ABC pattern, right? So we have our A up, we got our B down, and then we got our C, and we topped out perfectly at our 61.8 retracement level. That's a very, very good sign. Right, we've already started to pull back on TLT, and we're currently holding the 50% level at 106.33. If we break this level, most likely we're going to head back down to 102.94, and we also have a gap here on the chart. Okay, these gaps, um, these are gaps on the daily chart. These fill about 90% of the time historically. The main question is when. Okay, not if they're going to fill. They could fill sometime soon. They could fill sometime very long in the future, right? It could be anywhere from days to months to weeks to years. Um, but what I like to do is I like to track them. So that way I'm not caught by any surprises, right? If we get a huge rally and then we fill a gap in reverse uh, or we fill half of a gap in reverse, uh, you can use those as some really good signs, right? If you get a half gap fill, then reverse, that's usually pretty very bearish, all right? So what we're seeing here is, um, you know, it looks like we got our top on our C wave. Again, we topped out here perfectly at the 61.8% level. What we're doing is we're actually looking for the confirmation down here on our MACD. Okay, so this is our MACD. Uh, this is our blue line right here. Once this blue line starts trading below, that's when we're going to have confirmation. And that's going to be our sell signal uh, on TLT. Okay. Now, just to provide some valid examples of that, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go over how, you know, we've been using this strategy pretty much the whole year on, um, you know, TLT as well as the stock market. So what you do is you take your swing high, you connect it to your swing low. So you see, we come down, we retrace up here to the 50% level this time. We don't even make it to the 61.8 and then we head down lower, right? Um, and that is right when we got our MACD sell signal right here, when we broke below the 38.2 retracement level, and we see a huge, huge decline in TLT, right? So that's the reason we look at these three levels. These are the three most common retracement levels. Um, and just to show you guys how the patterns have been playing out, all right, we're tracking a large five wave impulsive move down. That's going to be our A, B, C, D, E down. Um, and your wave A, right, your wave one and your wave three and your wave five are going to be five wave impulsive moves, right? And so you see it's been playing out. We have a one down, two up, three down, four up, five down impulsive wave. Then you get an ABC correction wave, right? And we get an A here, B here, C, we top out at 50%, and then we start our five wave impulsive move to the downside. And that's what we're doing right now. We get one, two, three, four, five, and then we got our ABC. So it's very possible that we topped out here and our ABC corrective wave is done. And this is just um, some mere consolidation before we break our major support levels and get that MACD sell signal. OK, but until then, there's a possibility that we could just be consolidating and trying to head up higher. All right. Now, if we look at HYG, which is HYG is the high yield corporate bond ETF. OK, HYG is at a critical level right now, uh, and we actually did get the MACD sell signal on HYG. Right. So if we take a look at the MACD here, we got our sell signal. OK, and it's trading below the orange line now. 
Um, and we've been tracking, I'm tracking these two wedges right now. So we have the rising wedge right here, which is a bearish pattern. And as soon as we break this trend line here, we're going to come down and test these three levels. If we break through these levels, then we can expect for this wedge to play out and take us back down to our previous lows um, to test those lows or test an area near there, right? We have a little range right here uh, that we could, you know, find some support in. But I'm going to be watching this one closely. We already got the MACD sell signal. So it does give me some hints that we could, you know, break through here and see a sharp drop in HYG. So I'm actually watching three main support levels. Again, they're the 38.2, the 50%, and the 61.8%. Uh, this is how you spot a trend reversal or a trend continuation. Okay, so we're tracking our swing low up to the swing high. And if we bounce at these levels and continue up higher, that's what's known as a trend continuation, okay? But if we come down and break through these levels, then we're going to get our reversal, right? So we have a bearish pattern setting us up for the reversal, but we need to break through 74.30, 73.56, and 72.82, right? It looks to me like we had a look above and fail on this bullish pattern known as the falling wedge. So we we're really consolidating in between this area, and we we're looking for a breakout to the upside to see you know, if HYG and the bonds and, you know, the stock market could continue to rally. Uh, but it looks to me like we got a very clear look above and fail, right? So we looked above and then we failed and we're actually trading back inside of this trend line that we've been respecting very much. So keep an eye on 7430. If we break that level, uh, it's going to be a pretty bearish signal to the market. Uh, the next one I want to look at is TNX. TNX has been looking very bearish as well. We have a head and shoulders pattern fill, uh, playing out right here. Uh, and so, you know, you can see your head and shoulders right here. Uh, we have your left shoulder. You have your head. All right. You have your right shoulder uh, and it's playing out. Now, you could say that it is played out fully. Right. And that it started right here. But to me, I think that we're going to come down and fill these two gaps. Uh, I think that there's a pretty strong possibility of it. It kind of looks like we have a bear flag forming right now. OK, something like this. And if we break this trend line right here, um, I think that there's a strong possibility that we could see TNX come back down to like three point one five one. OK, um, you know, so just some more things looking bearish. Now, one thing I do want to highlight is that the MACD is very close to curling back above here and giving us a buy signal. OK, so we could see the TNX actually start to rise here. Um, you know, so I'll, I'll definitely be watching that. Uh, to see if that happens, if if that gets, if we get a buy signal on TNX, uh, that would be pretty interesting to see how that's going to affect the market. Okay, um, we're going to look at the S and P 500 right now, and then take a look at the VIX. Uh, so you know the S and P 500 looks very similar to TLT. There is a few things different, but ultimately we're tracking the same things. We're tracking this one, two, three, four, five impulsive move to the downside. OK, um, and that would take the S&P 500 to about 350 to 330, um, you know, at least if if everything, you know, plays out and we get this really bearish, bearish market uh, that, you know, the Treasury bonds are predicting and the bond market is predicting in the future. OK, because um, if you didn't know, the 10 year, two years inverted, the 10 year, three month is inverted. This has predicted a recession every time since 1955, um, you know, over the next three to nine months. So the next three to nine months are going to be quite scary. OK, and we're having a lot of recessionary fears being priced into the market. Again, we're seeing that we have an ABC wave up. OK, and it's much cleaner on the S&P 500 uh, than it is on TLT currently right because we got our abc up our corrective wave we topped out here at this trend line um and you know got a nice rejection then we had the cpi print and as soon as we opened up right we ended up just puking right it's been four straight red days of, of a bloodbath we've gapped down multiple times and what we're doing now is uh we're testing our levels right we're testing the 38.2 uh, the 50 percent, and the 61.8 same thing as we were looking at on the other chart. If we hold these levels of support, um, there's a possibility we could continue up higher and continue to try to be bullish, right? So we really need to keep a close eye on 379.15 and 371.85. If we, you know, break through these levels, then that's when we're going to get our reversal. Okay, now one reason that I am expecting a bounce sometime soon in the market is because it would just line up with our five wave impulsive move to the downside, right? Taking us down to the 330 to 350. If you take a look here, okay, you see we have our impulsive move to the downside. We end up bouncing off of the 61.8% here after we complete our ABC up, right? Then we start our one, two, three, four, five down. Right. And so we have our one here. It bounces off the 61.8. We get a nice bounce. We get our three wave down. OK, then we get another bounce or four wave up and then our five wave down. 
So, you know, it would make a lot of sense for me, um, you know, if the market continues to pull back and then all of a sudden we get this bounce, I would not be faked out. OK, I would be, you know, be mentally prepared for it. Really watch the structure. Again, I think that it's a good time to, you know, just kind of ride things out at the moment. Um, I think that there's going to be some pretty low volume in the market as we head into Christmas, as we head into the new year. Uh, so just be prepared for that, right? And so here we can see we got the MACD sell signal on the S&P 500, and we've had a steep decline since then, right? Um, and so that's what we're looking for ultimately on TLTs. We're looking for this MACD sell signal. Uh, so that way, you know, we would end up seeing something like this, um, you know, on TLT. Now, if we look at VIX, VIX is very interesting. And what it's done is it's traded one way pretty much the entire year for about a month or two. And every time it's done it, it's broken out and pulled back. So if we look currently, right, we have a breakout, we got a sharp pullback, okay, on the volatility index. And possibly, you know, we could be ready to take off on the VIX, okay? Uh, just to give you guys some examples, you know, and what I mean by it's it trades very one directional. We're looking here, it's trading in one direction for about a month or two. Okay, then it gets a breakout, pulls back, and has been continuing higher, right? We're seeing it's trading one direction, okay, going down for a month or two, come up, pull back, and then really go one directional to the upside, right? But every time it's breaking out past these wedges, it's always had a sharp drop, right? And here we had like a two or three day drop. Here we had like a two or three day drop in the VIX as well. And then you see a very sharp spike up. Okay. And we go to the past and we're seeing, again, we're trading here in this range. We're trading here in this wedge. Okay. Uh, one directional. What just happened there? Okay. Yeah. So here we're trading one directional. Okay. We get our breakout we'll pull back, and then continue up higher. Same thing over here. If we zoom in some more, uh, we can see trade in one direction, breakout, pull back, continue up higher. So that's basically it for today's video. Just wanted to cover some of the things um, and really go into these things before, you know, the market update uh, or before the market opens so that you guys are prepared for the rest of the week. Um, and, you know, ultimately the rest of the year heading into January and start to be, you know, mentally prepared for 2023 um, as there's a very strong possibility that we're going to have a recession.